welcome to my channel i'm glad you stopped by today we're going to be working on a whip and chat i'm going to be doing the lost child by ennis guerrero this is going to be my first time working on her canvas i actually started a tiny bit earlier today i've never worked on any of her canvases but i've seen her artwork throughout um, diamond art club and i would die for every piece <laughs> i love the darkness about it it's just something about her artwork that really calls out to me today um on my tray i just have all of my drills i have a reference photo there some washi tape i'm using the black my scissors i call it an exacto knife but it's something similar um to cut the canvas the plastic on top of the canvas and today we're gonna go with an aha sparkling water i usually have tea or coffee but today i feel like having that and i am obsessed i've always liked sparkling water but that is the brand the only brand that i drink now and i'm gonna be working in a bella art and nicole tray i just used this tray for the first time um for a tiny tiny snack size canvas i just finished absolutely love it she actually i have them in here here they go um these little dividers for when i'm doing a bit of confetti right now i have a lot of this color that i'm working on in this little square so i just have it nice and big to do that and i also have this big one my mom bought like a big pack on amazon because we really like working with bigger trays and she was kind enough to give me four of them so if another color calls for a ton of color blocking then i'll use that i have this amazing cover minder by saban over at Coverminders Saban. I think it's just Coverminders Saban on etsy i'll link her down below in the description box and it's so cute guys I got it specifically for this canvas because I got this canvas for an event, uh, Dark dark Crafts, by Dark Vibes Craft Along, I think it is again. I tend to forget, but I will put that down below with the video and everything that goes along with that event. And it's so cute. I thought it would be perfect for the canvas that I'm working on, that cute little spider. I actually, I don't know, I wasn't thinking. <laughs> and I cut off the whole plastic, so it's just there to be cute right now. And um, I'll actually use it in a functioning way when I get to my next box. This washi tape doesn't come off as nice in the video, but it's a black with sparkles. I really like the way it looks not crazy about the washi itself i got it on amazon and i don't know if you can see but it lifts a lot i feel like it doesn't really stick to the canvas really well which is super disappointing and i already started with some maybes so pretty love it so i'm gonna zoom you guys in closer and we can get started with the whipping chat welcome back to my whipping chats um i haven't done one in about a month because as i've explained in um, my previous video if you saw it i accidentally broke the tripod after shortly after i did that last video so i've been out of a tripod i got a new one in it's completely different um hopefully it will work just fine so how have you guys been it's been about a month like i said doing a whipping chat so kind of get have to get back into it um right now i am working on the lost child by ennis guerrero for the dark vibe along event and i am really enjoying it so far i mean i just started but um the ebs that i've placed already are stunning what is a canvas without ebs right <laughs> now that i've done them in art club and no more of those ones that I've done from Amazon. I can really see the difference. I just love working with ABs. Although I do have to say that I just did a snack size one, really, really tiny one um, by Dumb and Art Club that didn't have ABs, but everything about it was so nice that it really didn't need it. It looked just fine. I have never done any like adding sparklers, adding ABs or anything. I don't know if I would do that because I wouldn't know how to do it nicely. I would feel like I would kind of like be a little too random putting them down. I don't know. I guess with more practice and doing more canvases, you kind of get an idea of what you like, how you like it, and how I guess the professionals from Time and Art Club or any other brand that does ABs tends to space them out and then you're like okay yes i think this will work for me um i can do it like this like that now that i'm used to it but i am not at that point at all <laughs> which is fine because i really enjoy 
doing them exactly how they're sent out to be done. Um, and I'm always, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with it at all. I always wonder though, like, how does the artist feel about that? I guess it depends on the artist, but I kind of feel like they could take it one of two ways. One, like here, I've provided you, you know, my art through this medium of diamond art craft. And I know that people change it up and I'm fine with that. Like maybe they want to see your creativity with their artwork. But I can imagine there might be like one or two artists out there that are like, no, that's not how it was supposed to be done. That's not how I envisioned it. I don't know. It's just something that I've thought about. Um, but yeah, things have been pretty crazy around here. Um, we are moving and everything on this end of selling the condo has been going really well. The sellers have gotten their commitment letter for the mortgage. Um, they've come by, done inspection, done appraisal. So everything hopefully will go, you know, just fine on this end. It's just, it just takes a while for banks and paperwork and everything to be settled. It was absolutely insane trying to find a house, <laughs> though selling was easy, buying a house, not so much. It's definitely a seller's market right now, um, so it's been difficult. We're moving a little bit away, still within the same state, but a little bit away. So it was difficult because we would see houses come up that fit the criteria that we wanted, and sometimes... By the time we could even make an appointment to go see the place, to drive a couple of hours to see it and set everything up with the realtor, it was already pending. Like, pure insanity. People are paying way over, I mean way over asking price for their homes. They're waiving inspection. They're doing anything to get a foot ahead. And it's tough. <laughs> There's a Reddit out there for first time home buyers and although I'm not a first time home buyer, I still like to go on there and get an idea of what's going on in the market. Obviously, um that's me. If I don't do research, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I research and Google everything. Um and people are giving up. Like they're I've been doing this a year, I've been searching for nine months. They've just been looking and putting in 30, 40, 50, 100 offers throughout the months and they're getting beat out every single time. And the amount of money that you have to have for your down payment and everything is just, you can't say, oh, okay, well, tell them that I'm going to offer them 10% more or this many thousand dollars more. You really can't do that because it's already extraordinary the amount of money that you need to put down. And in New York, oh my God, all the different fees and whatnot, it's ridiculous. But, um, actually a couple of months ago, there was a house, excuse me, that salsa is getting to me. <laughs> I apologize. Um, we saw a house that we were really happy with, really liked it. And we put in an offer and it was contingent on us selling our condo at that point in time. We were still really early in the process. Uh, I think we actually had different buyers at that time who ended up um, walking away for whatever reason. And... It was contingent on us selling our condo and it was a couple of weeks going back and forth. We had signed the contract and everything. We drove up and did the inspection, but at the end of the day, being that we were contingent, they were still showing it to other people and they kept telling us, oh, we're going to get, you know, we're expecting to get a better offer and we were like, fine, I think that's okay. There's nothing we can do about it. We were not going to be the, t the people that say, oh, well, we'll do this, we'll offer that, we'll drop the contingency. No, not in a situation like this, buying a house. Absolutely not, because that's when you find yourself in this stacked situation where you didn't want to be. It's like everything can go fine, still can go through on a current um, property, but the minute you drop that contingency, something happens and the seller I'm sorry, the buyer walks away <laughs> or something like that. And then you're left with losing out on your um, deposit. I forget, you know, the money you put in escrow um, at the time of signing contract. But we did not drop the contingency. They kept telling us they were going to get better offers, but never told us that they did until finally they told us, okay, we got a better offer. Either you need to drop the contingency or... 
we're gonna go with them and we're like that's fine like go with them please <laughs> wait we we're not gonna do it don't think that we're gonna do it and we even told them go ahead like you don't have to wait the 48 hours um needed legally to be able to offer it to them so they did um and somebody else got that house and it was a bit sad at the time we really really liked that house i mean we had done so much research on the town and i i don't know i just saw myself living there already but i have this thing where even if it's last minute and it doesn't work out that's not where i was meant to be that's not where i was meant to raise my kids so we just kept chugging along and actually changed realtors i wasn't crazy about the one that i had and I found somebody who actually is from down here. I guess it's so funny because I never really heard people call me um, down, like city people in New York downstaters. But I mean, we always say upstate people from upstate, but they literally call us downstaters, which is so funny to me. But she, I guess, used to be a downstater. She lived in Long Island and she's awesome. Like completely different from the first person. Really, really like her. Um, we went up and stood like two or three days, I think it was three days actually, two nights up in the area that we were looking at because um, she was going to show us a couple of houses and again, you know, if something came up, let's say we went on Wednesday, if something came up on Thursday, we were already there as opposed to being told, oh, nope, you don't even have time to drive up here, um, it's pending. So we saw a couple of houses, absolute disaster, didn't like any of them, but then um, we saw some pop up and we're like, oh, we really want to see this house. And unfortunately, they weren't going to be showing until that Saturday. We weren't planning to stay another night, but um, we did because something about the house was like, oh, I really like that house. I really want to see it, but they just weren't going to be showing until then. So we stood and then we were able to see the house. Absolutely loved it. We're like, okay, yeah, this is our house. So we put in an offer. It was a very strong offer. And they basically were like, we're going to be showing all weekend. We'll let you know. But your offer is a strong one. Um, so I was kind of, I was really hopeful. I'm not going to lie. I was like super hopeful. And then they told us, okay, we'll hear from us Sunday evening when we go through everything, all the offers and whatnot. And then they changed it to Monday around noon. Monday about noon comes and nothing. And then finally in the afternoon, like, I don't know, two o'clock or so, my realtor is like, hey, you and another offer are the top two and they're trying to figure out which one to go with went back and forth about a couple of questions she had and then they told us no <laughs> they went with the other people and we were devastated I really really like that house and I was already um in my head saying oh that's my house like I know that's my house and they didn't go with us so again I was sad but I just told myself, well, that's not the place I was supposed to raise my kids. That's fine. You know, the search will go on. So it was getting a little scary in a sense because I don't really know what we're going to do in the meantime. I mean, I do have a travel trailer. I could um, get a seasonal spot somewhere up by where we're trying to move to. But, you know, you have it's in storage right now. I'd have to go get it. It's in Connecticut. I would have to go get it in Connecticut, have them um, dewinterize it. And that's just a whole nother thing to add to the list that we already have going on. So um, if I were to have an idea of when we would have a new house, then I could kind of figure out, oh, well, if it's only a couple of weeks, maybe we can do an Airbnb or a hotel. Because that's what we did last time when we moved. We just did in a hotel. Um, not the most affordable option but back then it was literally the only option because i only had gotten my travel trailer now um this past summer in 2021 um so yeah uh actually like a week after that they called and said oh listen um you're you are our backup and other people have walked away for whatever reason they couldn't you know i'm not going to get into the details but it didn't work out 
do you want to go for it? And I was like, yes, <laughs> definitely, without a doubt. Because with the other house, the other people actually, that just reminded me, they um, ended up, you know, having issues as well. I don't know. I don't remember the specifics, nor would what I want to say, but they didn't work out with the first house that we had the contingent offer on and they were like hey it's available if you want it and just something about it we were like no it was that wasn't meant for us something just didn't feel right didn't feel like our home anymore and we we're like that's fine we'll just let that one go uh, this one we we're like no yes <laughs> we want it where do we sign the papers so we've signed the contract we're now trying to get everything together to send to underwriting through the mortgage company the bank um some paperwork i'm reading in the mail that i hope doesn't take too long to come in that was supposed to fix uh, a birth date issue hopefully it doesn't come in with the wrong information again and then it could be sent off to underwriting and i'm so excited i'm trying not to get too excited because the house is never yours until you're sitting there at that table and sign at closing. I know that. But you can't help but get excited. Like, I love it. The backyard, so many plants inside. It needs some work to make it feel like ours. Definitely, like, some paint color choices <laughs> that aren't my taste. But that's fine. Like, you can change that and actually enjoy working on projects. I think I would have a lot of fun making it my own. Um... Ah, messed up there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm really excited. Actually, today is, I don't even know, today's Thursday. <laughs> and we scheduled the inspection to go on Monday. Well, my realtor, she's been so good. She just says, hey, what days are you available? And I'll schedule it. So I told her when we would be available. So on Monday, I guess, was the soonest they were able to do it. Um, because right now, we're pretty flexible. We want to get it done. And hopefully everything comes back okay for the inspection. We're city folk. <laughs> like, there's things that we don't really understand or know about that we would really have to learn about, like the septic system. I remember when she called us and told us that we had gotten the house that they were going to give us a credit because they know that there's an issue with the leach field. And we were like, oh, what is that? <laughs> we had no clue what a leach field is. And it has something to do with the septic system. And we're like, oh, OK. Like when she told me that, I'm going to sound so dumb. But I really thought it was like literally leeches because it's a very... Um, country kind of home so i figured oh maybe they have like an animal problem <laughs> and when i asked her i was like what is that i'm sorry i have no clue and she kind of like laughed and was like yeah i know right because she's from down here too she knows that we don't know what any of that stuff is so she explained it's something to do with the septic system um so we should be getting the credit for that and we have the septic and well yes it's going to be a well <laughs> it's so funny to me um so i'm from the bronx I moved to Queens like two, three years ago, and now we're moving to the country. So I would have never thought I'd be <laughs> in a place where I'm living with well water and a septic and acres of land, but it's actually my dream. Like if I could <laughs> get paid for being an at-home homesteader mom, count me in. Like I really hope I can get some chickens. I have all these plans to like build things for my kids back there make it so homey and that they love you know their backyard their home inside their room everywhere but something about having all that land i really want to make it special for my kids and i want to grow my own vegetables my own vegetable garden flower garden all of it um but i'm gonna have to remember to take it slow because <laughs> we are not made of money so i have to prioritize what i want to do first first comes first is my kids so get their rooms together and then I can work on my room um the living room and everything else oh and I really like it because it has both a pellet and wood stove in the house I really wanted a fireplace but I'm totally fine with a wood stove and the pellet stove I definitely need to learn how to use them we watched like a couple of videos to familiar familiarize ourselves with it to be honest we didn't even know what a pellet stove was we thought 
that it was just like a, the wood stove and you would put the pellets inside the wood stove like we have no idea what we're doing so we have to learn it all and for those that don't know no you do they're two completely different things you cannot put pellets inside of the wood stove so yeah we have a lot to learn but i'm excited it's gonna be really fun it's gonna be a whole new chapter in our lives and it's a great place to raise my kids i think they'll enjoy it um and then when they're older i'm sure they're gonna want to move to the city which is fine by me i'm a city girl myself love the city um grew up going to manhattan every single weekend and i think it's important to have that city experience as well still have the street smarts and everything so they'll be well-rounded my parents made sure i was really well-rounded and i want to do the same for them um i don't think i've mentioned their ages my kids are 16 months and three he's gonna be four in april so he's almost four um so i'm really excited they're not going to remember. Mason might remember being down here. I don't know. He seems to have a really good memory. He remembers things that I would never have expected him to. So he might remember living down here. Definitely not in the Bronx. We moved when he was maybe just had turn one. So he's not going to remember that. But that's fine. Uh, where are you guys from? Let me know where you guys are from. Do you know everything that I'm talking about? <laughs> Give me some tips on country living, on wood stoves, pellet stoves, all that. Because <laughs> apparently I need to learn. Um, oh yeah, and there's a pond on the property. We didn't see it when we first saw the house because it was like super snowy. There was a ton of snow so we didn't walk all the way back there. Uh, but obviously on Monday when we go for that, we're going to go and look at the pond. And I wonder what kind of, like, I have no idea what kind of pond it is. Does it have fish in it already? Can you put fish in it? How do you maintain a pond? No clue. But we'll have to figure it out. I think it would be really cool if we could um, put some koi fish in there. I would absolutely love that. That would be really awesome. Uh, I know my kids would love that they live a really long time they seem really cool to have in a pond so yeah let me know what you guys think in terms of country living or city living i know um a lot of you live in cities too does it sound crazy to move outside of the city to go more country to you guys i mean i know i keep saying i'm gonna go to the country it really is a country town but it's only 20 25 minutes to a big city like a really big city so i do like that i mean i literally have one neighbor but if i drive if you hear that noise my cat is eating the plastic to the diamond painting but if you guys um I lost my train of thought. But yeah, it's 20 minutes, 25 minutes to the city. And I'm not worried about being too secluded because it has great hospitals only 20, 25 minutes away. It has everything that I would need in that um, distance. And it's still just within a couple of hours of the city. So we will still be coming back for different things, especially in the summer. Like I love Broadway shows and when it's possible i would love to come and bring my kids to see shows or just hang out see things that i saw growing up you know my mom made sure that we weren't those kids that lived here our whole lives and didn't get to see manhattan there's so many kids like especially in middle school that i went to school with that never went into manhattan and like you're so close to such a beautiful city to not take your kids there is such a disservice and there's so many things you can do for free. Like my mom, back in the day, she would just open the yellow pages and look up what museums, what activities to do with us. Because she had um, me and my brother, the two of us, and she also, also constantly had my three cousins. So she would just get our backpacks on with our lunches in there and take us on the train and we would just go to all the museums. My favorite was the Sony Museum. I think I'm all done with this one and oh man it was so cool i think it's still open 
Um, I'm not sure so many things have changed since the pandemic, but if you're looking for a museum, definitely do that one. Um, we went several times and it was my favorite. It was always like so high tech and just so fun. And a lot of times, a lot of these museums, whoops, I made a mess. A lot of these museums don't even charge or they'll have like a day of the week that they charge. Um, I'm sorry, where, where it's free. Same as the Bronx Zoo. The Bronx Zoo is free on Wednesdays. Like, if you want to go see it, it, you I think it's a must. Same like when I went to California, the San Diego Zoo is a must. If you're anywhere near the city, you can take the train and it's so easy to get there. Um, but yeah, the, my mom was always really great at making sure we saw those things. We saw the Statue of Liberty a couple of times. Another good tip, if you want to see the Statue of Liberty but don't necessarily care about going on Liberty Island, you can take the Staten Island Ferry. You get a great view, you can get amazing photos, and the Staten Island Ferry is free. You just ride it, turn around, and get on the ferry, and get right back to New, um, to Manhattan. That's a trick that we always did when our family would visit from like Puerto Rico or a different state. Um, we have been on Liberty Island as well before, and it's nice. It's different though, you know, from before 9-11. Um, used to be able to go up and I don't think you're allowed inside of the actual monument anymore. I could be mistaken. Um, yeah, I think that's where I'm going to stop today. I know that my son should be back shortly. He went out with his grandparents because he actually had a modeling gig today for Nike. And my grand, my grandma, his grandma, my mom is the one that always takes him to his shoots. That's their thing. Uh, and they should be back shortly. So thank you again for joining me on my whipping chat. Leave a comment. Let's get to know each other. Let's become friends and enjoy this great community that we have here. Until next time. Bye.